Welcome back to the Rock Island Podcast. It's been a few weeks, so we've been a little on vacation. I wouldn't say we've been not busy, but we've been busy just on a small mini vacation anyways. So, uh, yeah, welcome back, and I hope everyone had a great holiday and ate some good food. Hopefully didn't gain too much weight from all that extra <laughs> bacon fat and turkey and ham. And <laughs> normally, gra- normally Amy's grandma makes like five, like four or five different pies. But she didn't this year. She made like one pie because like I always make it a point have one slice of every pie. Doesn't matter how full I am, like it's gonna happen. So that yeah. didn't happen this Gotta year. Got to yeah. sample them all. You don't want anybody offended. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, anyways, welcome back. Um, it's just gonna be us three today. Uh, Theo is a little bit busy, so hopefully next week you better type in the keyboard to come back, Theo, because we want him back here so I can okay. slide behind my green curtain again. But uh, Karen, if you do the honors to welcome us in even more, yeah, some more. <laughs> Let me put down my bacon greaser bat really quick. Um, <laughs> Welcome all of you back to the the Rockhound podcast. Of course, we would love to know what you're up to and what you got for Christmas and all the cool things that you did while we were all on vacation. So leave those in the comments for us for sure. Uh, tonight, you guys are the stars of the show. We're doing shows and tells. And so uh, stick around for that, uh, especially if one of them is yours. Um, we've been missing you. And of course, I am Karen over on the very, very uh, river in the sky, Oregon coast with lots of it coming down on us um, of Ozone Fine Art Ventures. And Kurt? Uh, my name is Kurt with Rock County Adventures out here in the more lately cold than warm part of the western colorado area <laughs> it's been really cold lately like we, we, we got like six inches of snow and then it it was like okay for a day and then we got another two inches of snow and then it froze and then melted and then froze so just like ice on top of snow Ooh. on top of ice Yikes. and it's just yeah cold, that cold and slick <laughs> yes i tried to, i was we, we, we went on walking the other day and i tried kicking i thought it was a snowball but it was an ice ball frozen Ooh. to the ground <laughs> yikes hopefully you had your steel toe sandals on no steel toe crocs <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, <Keens. laughs> all and right well go I, ahead i guess that makes me kyle kyle of world of rock hounds aka the man behind the curtain which is funny because I actually have a green curtain, green curtains, actually a green sheet for like tabletop for shows, but I actually have like a green curtain. So at some point I'll utilize that one of these shows to be like, have it in front and be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you all for the intros and the, man, I haven't done this in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So how was everyone's weeks and any current projects going on? You want to do shouts? Oh, yes. Do shouts, please. Let's do shouts really quick, and then we'll hear all about Kurt's week. See how rusty I am? (laughs) We got a plan. (laughs) It's all right. Um, So uh, really quick, huge, huge thank you to Dan Hurd. Uh, That was a while back, like seems like about a month ago. Uh, If you haven't seen that show, definitely go check it out. It was a really cool hangout with um, Dan and all of his amazing shows and tells from his claims. Uh, Of course, everybody in the comments in the chat loved the uh, hangout and, and the amazing shows and tells uh scott lambright and monster agates and some others were seemingly surprised and impressed (laughs) that we had him on and wondering who is next to be on the show so we're trying (laughs) 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 you know we gotta one up ourselves at this point i guess um lisa large on uh 45 dustin finds rocks greg dirksen and greg dirksen channeling liz and charlie the adventure closet i want to see that puppet show alice in mineral land jo- johnny rock hounding hasio andre Sandmaker, blind squirrel rocks clouds uh, claude that's claude from Calgary. i almost said his last name there um there were a couple people that commented on on the that last uh podcast with dan and it you can only imagine or sued uh new zealand rocks down under joseph bullock gold member diamond hunter tv uh and some more actually dug it and then of course all of y'all in the chat chatting way as we speak right now and all of you out there we love you those are the quick shouts thank you let's 
I don't know if you heard. <laughs> I look like a, like a pear, but still. Yes. <laughs> what fruit are you giving? I, 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 I apple you. I pear you. Yeah. <laughs> but, He's impaired. But yeah, I, 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 I feel like it looked like Dan was almost standing the entire time during that podcast. And I thought about it. No, I noticed that. I thought about that after the fact. I'm like, oh man, I feel really bad because like we told him like it should be about an hour. And then to being like a longer podcast, I'm like, oh man, I feel super bad that we basically had him. Like, we should have all like said, hey, you can sit down, like relax a little bit. <laughs> Offer him a chair. He's a teacher. He's used to doing that. I thought about that too. Is like, yeah, he's probably pretty. Probably used to is it. a yeah. His his power posture standing. So <laughs> but, yeah, that was that was a long one though. <laughs> it was. It was worth it. Was. It. It, was it, was worth a, it was a lot of fun though. Yeah. But uh, thank you for the shouts. Mm-hmm. And now we can get into how everyone's week was. I mean, last several weeks, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Karen, would you mind going first? Oh, uh, I I think Kurt should go first since I just oh, I should go first? Okay. Yeah, cool. winded myself. To start off, it is Thursday today, right? It's not Wednesday anymore? Yes, it's Thursday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, it's we actually Friday. Re- <laughs> is it really? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so let's see. My week or weeks have been great. We have, uh, well, I haven't really been able to get the vehicle fixed just yet. So we've just been chilling at the house and getting projects completed and playing a lot of board games and uh, going out on walks in the winter, which has been very beautiful. Have you ever tried going on a midnight walk when the moonlight's blasting the snow snowy mountains it's super beautiful try it out mm. just make make sure you have plenty of jackets and you're staying warm because it gets pretty good chilly <laughs> uh, it probably gets colder over there than it does over here for sure how what's the elevation over there oh I depends on where know. you are yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're at zero <laughs> Oh, true. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's a dumb question. <laughs> Kyle, on the other hand, he's he's got a couple thousand on me, I think. Uh, is, I'll have to look it up because, like, it doesn't feel like it should be a couple thousand. You keep chat, keep chatting. I'll look this up really quick. He's got to inquiry minds need to know now. I, lately, it's it's been about at night. It's been getting between fifteen to eight. Uh, 15 to 3 degrees, somewhere in there. Yeah, um, it's cold. So it gets sure. pretty chilly, but I don't know how cold it is compared to y'all. Um, it's like the 30s but, uh, lately. Oh. Like high 30s. That's nice. That's Same really here. Nice <laughs> That's a heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely a heat wave. But, uh, yeah, uh, the last several weeks, week, not several, last few weeks have been great. Just been staying indoors, staying warm, uh, watching shows playing board games, uh, polishing rocks, wire wrapping, and uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, we had a lot of great desserts and lasagna for Christmas, and it was amazing. Mm, nice. uh, lasagna. And uh, homemade lasagna. Uh, really good. Nice. <laughs> um, and uh, i trying to think. Is there anything that I'm leaving out? Uh, for Christmas, I got... Uh, my grandma sent me a really cool piece of like laced agate with a center druzy quartz pocket. And uh, my girlfriend got me a gift card. So I'll be getting a 10 inch high tech diamond. Uh, slab so uh, <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. We're, we're excited for that. And um, yeah, just trying not to freeze. <laughs> Sounds worthy. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Well, thank yeah, you it for sure. Really good time. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. Well, at least you have the beer to keep you warm. So that's. Oh, good, I, that's I was actually telling her that the other day. Like we were out walking. I was like, I've been like wanting to shave this because it's been driving me crazy here in there. Wait. Especially when I'm like eating my lasagna and stuff. And like, it, like drips. <laughs> and then she's like, you got lasagna on your face like hours later. Um, <laughs> uh, but I've been wanting to shave it. And then like we we're out the other other night walking. I was like, I'm really glad I haven't shaved it yet. It's really keeping my face nice and warm. But yeah, I'm not sure how long it'll last. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait till the spring. <laughs> I know. It may even be longer then. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, thank you for sharing uh, your how your weeks were. I can go ahead and go and give Karen a little bit more air to breathe. <laughs> um, so first of all, Corral's elevation is actually 235 feet. Oh, only 200. I thought it was more than 235 feet. Yeah, only 235 feet. I mean, if you think, I don't know how tall like Mary's Peak is, but like I think it just goes up and then it comes right, right back down. But um, so for Christmas... I got a lot of stuff from a lot of people. Rocks. A lot of box un- unboxings. Boxes of rocks. <laughs> and so, like, right now the rock room, because uh, I was I started doing live sales, and I, I took a break for live sales for just a little bit. But I moved all the, like, the the, sh- the packing and stuff actually in here into the garage. Because my ultimate plan was to have, like, do the sales out of the garage, do the packing in, like, in the rock room. The rock room right now is a catch-all for everything. While we're going, well, while I'm going through stuff, because I'm going through all the shelves uh, or all the cupboards here in the garage to kind of get rid of stuff, and we're also getting rid of like old, like Rivers' old toys. So right now, the, the rock room is literally just catch all for everything until we can get done spring cleaning and organizing in winter. <laughs> um, but yeah, I need to uh, add more shelves in the rock room for sure, and then catalog, catalog and label everything. <laughs> um. And then Amy got me a lens for a camera, which I don't quite own yet, but it's on my wish list to to buy a fancy camera because I want the production value of my content to go up. I mean, we always tell people to start recording with what you have, and that's true. Like if you have a like a smartphone, start recording. If you wanna if you wanna up your production value, save up. You can always improve as you go on. It's not a big deal. <laughs> start with what you have. Um, but I also have like a lot of other products here, uh, going on too. I have like several Kentucky agates I need to polish and uh, oh, they they look like they're going to turn out really cool. Like, oh, they, Kentucky agates are like crazy cool. Once you get on the inside and you find some of that, the reds and blacks mixed together, super cool. Yeah, I'm excited to um, work them. I have I don't think I've worked in Kentucky agate before, so hopefully it's not too hard. I know some of the stuff Montana agate is pretty pretty tough. It's not uh, like that at all. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, <laughs> but I also like I several months ago I bought some expanding um, uh, or not expanding, but I bought some belts for my expanding wheels. So I I think one of them is like a thousand grit. And like the highest grit that I have, like on my wheels right now, is like 600. So I think I bought like uh, more 400, 600, 800, and then thousand grit belts for my like my bigger sanding discs. And I'm like, oh man, I can actually break them in now, and I can actually work them and make a video. Because <laughs> most of the products that the products that I've been doing is have been been on my um my cabin machines. Which uh, next week's video. Is going to be an opal opal video, yes. and I got done with Paul. You guys will see the video, but I got done polishing it. Found a couple of scratches. I'm like, okay, this will be nothing. This super easy fix. Just like stand over that one spot, blend it in, call it good. It's no, no. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't even want to ask. <laughs> I must have sanded and re-sanded that entire face several times because something went wrong on the wheels and it caused like deeper oh. scratch or it caused more scratch not deeper scratch but it caused more scratches and then the uh, contamination somewhere on the polishing wheel so it's just like <sighs> oh man but i said take a deep breath and i stopped after like the first time like you know i'm just gonna come back to do this tomorrow like i'm not gonna push it and then get frustrated uh but i also have to remember that opal is very very finicky and like you think of sitting in finicky? No. <laughs> Queen of finicky is the the mistress opal for sure. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I Trouble, will st- drama, all the good stuff. I will stick with my obsidian. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't stay away from the opal. I can't wait to to get back into doing some some hand carving. I usually take a break during the winter time because it's so darn cold, as Kurt was mentioning. But um, yeah, I miss it. You know, you start missing your favorite mineral, you know. There are there are um some opals that I got from uh Lisa that I wanna oh uh, I yeah. Wanna 
Me too. I want to say something about that after after you're done. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, um, so I was, I was going through uh, all the rocks I was got sent to, and I'm like, ah, I really want to work these. Like, so I, I got like a like a list, like a back burner in my mind of like all the stuff I want to polish up. But you know, customer projects come first, and so so many things have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and there's a bunch of other stuff that's been going on too. Just, uh, this it's hard to cram like several weeks worth of stuff. And since like normally I'm behind the scenes anyway, like I haven't really been like saying like what I've been doing, like on very let many it episodes. all out, Kyle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will say one more thing though. Um, uh, so that giant piece of fire obsidian that I got that I, that I really want to work, I took a small piece that. I that had broken off from it from a long time ago. Cut it. I cut it wrong. And normally I double check, I triple check before I even take a piece to the is saw. Is this gonna hurt like the opal story? No, it's worse. So yeah, I think <laughs> is this the one that you posted about? Yes. Oh so for God. those that didn't see, I posted a picture <laughs> of like a cut piece of fire obsidian and I thought I cut just above the layer. I cut straight through it, really? like near perfect. It's like, whew. and the only thing that was left over was the little shard on both sides of a hint of that what potential color is going to be in that one layer. And I'm just like, well, Bryce, I at least I know there's there's color there, and <laughs> I thought it was one color because I thought one I thought one layer was like green, the other layer was like yellow. But I don't think that's the case. I think they're actually gonna be like two, like both layers are gonna have like multiple, like different colors and different hues, which is nice. It just makes the value of this go up. Um, but bright side, I did happen because since there was two layers of fire in that one piece, I managed to salvage the the smallest of layers. And so I've been in the process of making that a video. But uh, it's really difficult because a lot of times with the with the fire obsidian, the closer that you grind down to that fire layer, the brighter it gets. But then if you grind down too far, then it's just, it's just too close. It's <laughs> gone. Yeah. A little, little close. It, it was actually potentially a, a very expensive mistake because like my plan was to make like like makeshift cabs out of those uh, two pieces and then sell them to kind of help pay for like all the investment of the of the obsidian from the rock shop that 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 cut mistake was it was expensive like i i weighed the stone i'm like yeah that could have been a, a pretty pretty penny stone to help pay for a lot of the stuff but you know not a big deal i have plenty more it's not the other world <laughs> it's just if you're gonna cut something that you're trying to that's valuable it's no different from cutting wood measure twice cut once but in this case measure and check multiple times before you even touch the blade. Do it. Treat it, yeah. Treat it like it's your precious. <laughs> right. Yeah, have somebody else check for you, and another other person. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that's what. That's where um, some whiteout would have been helpful to like mark where that layer is at. And so when I take it to the saw, I can see like where to avoid. But you know, again, not going to worry about it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But. Uh, I will end it there, and I'll pass it off to you. Oh wait, Kurt, you said you had something that you want to say before. Oh, I was just gonna say, Lisa, that box that she—I know she sent us all a box. That box was insane, and I haven't been able to like probably say thank you for it. So thank you very much. Like, <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Like, it was awesome. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's on my list here. <laughs> yeah, and she's on my list too. Oh, actually, that reminds me. I need to. Yeah. I, I got a list going that uh, stuff I need to send out, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, as with you guys, uh, we had some cool family gathering stuff where there was uh, food to eat. Uh, I was surprised at um, the fact that, you know, how everybody always makes the uh, kind of joke about everybody's cream casseroles. You know, like somebody brings the like the uh, creamy bean casserole with like the crusty stuff on top. Yeah, there were yeah. four. There were four to like creamy casseroles. Were they like, all the same, or were there any different ones? All time high. They were all all four of them were different. Ooh, <laughs> like, that's, that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's like wow, kind of like your pie. Just occurred to me, like wow, you could just like try every single one and 
yeah, there was just a, a bunch to eat. But even more importantly, it was really fun to be able to gather with family again. Uh, because, you know, the last couple of years have been sort of non. And so uh, it was like the biggest gathering I think I've been to for quite some time. Wow. And um, yeah, yeah. And so that was good. Um, and I was, you know, we were just talking about this stuff. Uh, awesome stuff came in the mail. And uh, among those, uh, the the Lisa package and Jackie and uh, Nira, thank you so much, you guys. And I'm like not on the ball like Kyle. He did some killer unboxing videos. You guys have to go check those out. It was fun watching him get his Christmas, <laughs> their Christmas for sure. I almost um, like didn't post consecutively back to back. Like I initially thought about doing like on my normal, normal posting days, like every Wednesday, because that would have taken at least... How many unboxings were like four or five? So I would have yeah. taken a good month wow. to go through like all the unboxings. Like, you know, you binged it. I just it like, you know, so let's rad. do this. Just every day, <laughs> we'll call it good because I know Amy may mention, like, if you just do it like every Wednesday, it's gonna get boring. I'm like, yeah, you're right. So let's go, we'll do it every single day. And I think that was the best, the best way to really do that. That was Plus, welcome. It was, know. it was good for the season too. It felt right. Yeah. So it was fun. Nice. Yeah. So thanks for, for sharing all that. Um, and, uh, I of course was slowly dialing in the, uh, the very, um, weird details about my faceting machine, uh, which is draped in black right there. I absolutely have been absorbed by it. Like I did go to the, the holiday things, but other than that, I have been stuck right there and don't want to go to bed, get up first thing in the morning and like, can't wait until like I jump on the machine. It's ridiculous. And so, yeah, spoiler alert that, you know, that's what you're going to see for show and tell tonight, uh, coming soon. Um, it's been super stormy out, uh, which I've been eyeballing through rainy windshield wipers, you know, the, the beaches and stuff like that. There's some washouts for agates, um, uh, not so much, uh, the places where I like to go yet for the fossils, but, um, you know, so the, the season's on for all intents and purposes, but it's been so stormy and we've been having these like massive swells, like 33 foot swells and stuff like that. So wow. go down on the ba beach is not good idea for you. So <laughs> like, it's been good working weather to stay inside and obsessively facet, um, and work on custom orders, uh, lots of that going on. And so, uh, it's just been, it's been a really fun, you know, uh, hole up and stay inside like Kurt, uh, and, and just work and play with pretties. And so you'll see more of that in a little bit, but that's pretty much the culmination of it. So let's get into the show and tells for the, uh, the viewers, eh? Yeah. That works good. Nice. Was I supposed to go first for that? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'll go ahead and segue into myself. <laughs> <Aha>. <laughs> Whoa. Um, so Bob's Rocks uh, sent us a uh, a couple fun pictures uh, from the Arroyo walk at the ranch, um, which is, oh man, I, I'm jealous because that sounds warm and uh, dry river betty and that just you know, you're going to be finding some uh, cool stuff. So uh, one of them is possibly a Chalcedony uh, rose or roses in the matrix. And this is cool. Like that one looked really cool. Yeah. That would be a fun thing to, to, you know, turn over and pick up. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, then he's got um, a, what is just a mess on the first shot, but on the other side, uh, obsidian um, that is combined into the mess of large and tiny specks. Um, so what do you guys think it is? Like welded obsidituff or... Obsidituff. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I like> that. <laughs> Rhyolitidian. Um, and uh, so anyways, it's it's really cool. And I that's totally the th type of thing that makes me think of Jared too. Like, you know, some kind of basalt amalgam with glassy bits of things that would micro mount nicely. And so I, I love all volcano vomit basically. Yeah. <laughs> good, good chunks were blown there. Um, and yeah, I think that the, those are the, those are the pictures from uh, Bob's, Bob's rocks. So thank you so much for those. It's always uh, fun to, to get an eyeful from over there. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. So I'm next with Travis from 406 Findings, and he sent in some uh, very cool pictures. He says, hello, everyone in the podcast. Hope all is well. 
Today's show and tell from 406 findings is some beautiful Bear Canyon agates recently cut and polished in the, in the past few videos. These were all self-collected this summer thanks to Theo, who was kind enough for showing me how and where they were. I can't wait to get back out there and collect more since they have become one of my favorite Montana agates. Hope everyone likes these beautiful agates and have a, and has a great podcast. So, if you don't like them, I'm coming after you. So, <laughs> yeah, I need to make my way to uh, to Mon Montana. To oh, I know, right? <laughs> those things are beautiful. Like, yeah, they are. Those like those the cut faces. You can see so many little bitty like happy faces in there, and. Uh... <laughs> I would love to make some knife handles out of those. <laughs> and and, and uh, Travis, are you going to make some uh, fishing lures out of those at all? I want to say yes. Yes. Like, if I had to guess, I want to say yes. <laughs> It'd be really hard to even like. It, 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 I think for me, it'd have to be like more decorational for that because that's oh, that's yeah. some pretty cool stuff. Totally. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's so contrasty and swirly and squirrely. Like lots of happy faces, happy. lots of. Yeah, <laughs> super happy. We love the mood. Oh, speaking of happy face and rocks, that one rock or that one agate that has like the cookie monster like happy face in it. Yes, yeah. It's making this rounds again. I'm like, can you guys oh stop, my gosh. Stop, stop sharing? It's cool. Let's stop <laughs> sharing it to a, a page that is like strictly for Oregon material. <laughs> it's not from Oregon. Don't post it. It's cool, but don't post it. <laughs> All you right, should have that as a, uh, you know, just pin it to the the top, and <laughs> like have the picture and go like there. Don't need to show it anymore. Just pin it to the top. I'll just <laughs> post a picture of my my holly blue with a little happy face that was in that. Go like go. here, we're, we're gonna replace the cookie monster with this little happy face in the holly blue. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you don't need to share it anymore. Okay. So um, yeah, that was Travis's. So thank you, Travis, for your show and tell. Um, next is Kurt. Yeah, so let me switch over to that real quick. I forgot to write down my so, what, what, what? What? Oh, I'm talking to myself. Oh. <laughs> I, I forgot to write down my time. <laughs> oh, so uh, Jim Yoni, uh, he sent us an email uh, with uh, two pictures um, and says, this is an amylite. Uh, that weighs about 26 pounds from my collection oh, that I found man. in a gravel pit. What? Just oh, O'Manning. Like, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, found in uh, a gravel pit over over the years. Uh, this is one of many nice things that I found in this one pit. It has been reclaimed now. I hope to send uh, more pictures in the, I'm guessing, future. Um, but uh, it is a large amp ammonite, and I'm, it's too bad Theo's not here because I'm sure he would love to see it. <laughs> but uh, you can see it coming out of like the matrix of the uh, stone um, and has some crazy cool detail. Yeah, it's insane. That would be so, like, 26 pounds, did you say? Yeah, 26 pounds. That's wow. Pretty hefty. Yeah. yeah. That's... Oh. So yeah. it is insane. Jim is like, actually on my list of um, people I'm sending something to because have, he, have you done? Has he sent your rocks? Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 I forgot how long that video was, but it was a, like he sent me a lot. Like there was yeah. a lot of cool stuff in there, and yeah, that's why I said like I have to get the rock room like more shelves because there was so much cool stuff in there. So it, it only, it's, yeah. <laughs> he seems like a really cool, a really cool guy. He, yep, he, he has sure. sent me a box as well. I think my, my unboxing video was like 25 minutes long because there's just so much stuff. And, and uh, very some well of wrapped. the, what? Oh, and yeah. Very yeah, well yeah, wrapped. Yeah, very well wrapped. Nothing broken. And uh, the, I think the coolest thing that I liked was the, uh, like from the, what he sent me was the mammoth tusk uh, piece that he sent me. Wow. That he found out there in, uh, I think, North Dakota. And then uh, the, uh, what the heck is it called? I can't remember what it's called now. Um, it's okay. I'm sure it'll be in the video that you post, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 they're, they're found at, like like just south of Zion National Park. Uh, they're, um, oh my gosh. 
for a second. I'll tip my tongue. Um, Septuarian module. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot remember. Uh, but yeah, those are the coolest things that he sent me. Yeah, that but, is, uh, that is all cool. Like, so thank you, Jim, for all those <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And there is one more picture. Um, one second. And Karen, if you haven't done a trade with Jim, you need to do a trade with Jim. Too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I'll be talking to Jim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he he sent another picture in saying this is another gravel pit find, weighs twenty pounds, and it looks like it is a um, like a conglomerate of. Um, uh, amylite trace fossils, um, which seems which looks really cool too because it has some really cool details, um, of the amylites. But uh, yeah, that is pretty cool. Maybe something would be really cool to uh, like put on a um one of those stands, just have it as a display piece. Oh yeah, totally. Or figure a way to make a mold of it, and then you can always. No, take the back. Nope. <laughs> it's uh, the first thing comes to mind is those those fake fossil like vendors. I think like if someone were to make a mold of it and then sell like the molds, like the castings and like, but paint in like where the shells are, mm -hmm. and then like have it specifically noted like, hey, this is a cast of the original. Like this is more for decoration, like artsy purposes. Different story, but like. I don't know, people that sell fake fossils like the, the casts or just fake fossils in general like this this no no but that'd be cool yeah <laughs> that would be okay um any more before i think uh um, oh go ahead oh no you go ahead oh i was just gonna say yeah if that's uh all with kurt then you got the last one right Sweet. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jim, for uh, sending some of your show and tells. And then it comes back down to me. Um, we have um, Rudy V, who sent us in some awesome pictures as well. Give me one second here to pull it up. Because I'm so organized right now. Okay. The courts have found. Sorry. I'm not going to edit this out. This is just, I'm just keeping it real here. <laughs> <laughs> the quartz I found on a field in Germany. I wouldn't find the rock if I didn't get fired that day. Um, yeah, I don't want to re repeat that, but it was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> the fossils here are in sandstone, uh, are in sandstone kind of stone. People used to build it. People used to build with it and even use it today here in the Czech Republic. You guys got some. Hold on, I'm cutting off part of this email. All right, you guys got some weird kind of stone, um, the dark ones with this, the with them fossils. Never saw that in my life. So hey, yeah, sent them some pictures of um, the quartz pieces, which are pretty cool. And you got some fossils uh, in like some kind of like shale sandstone. It'd be sandstone, yeah, right? shale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did mention it was something like sandstone. Yeah, it kind of looks like a. Uh, like so, like a shell in like the brachiopod family. Yeah, I've got uh, more quartz. Sometimes, like when I see this kind of quartz, I want to cut it open and polish it. Oh yeah. Um, just because sometimes, like with like that variety of quartz, you can sometimes get. I don't. I don't want to say for sure, but sometimes you get like pyrite, or you can get gold inside of it. Because a lot of times, like back in the day, like when they were mining for that kind of stuff, they would grind down and pulverize like big boulders of quartz. Just to get mm -hmm. like the smallest bit of gold out of there. Yeah. Isn't that how wire gold comes? I think so. I think yeah. I could be wrong. Or but... it, it's, it's either in that or something else that's dissolvable so that they can like uh, sometimes they can dissolve it away so that the filaments of gold are just all that's left. And it's really cool looking. I don't know if you've seen that before. I, I don't think I've seen that process before. Well, maybe. It, they're I've, elegant if yeah they look like lightning strikes or something you know it seems like one of those fractal things where you know uh nature imitates yeah. nature in another way it's mm -hmm. so cool yeah interesting check it out google it everybody's going and googling it right now hey google, google. 
another tangent. But uh, yeah, these are some really cool pictures that you sent in, and um, thank you for sharing the rocks from your neck of the woods, way over <laughs> there. Yeah, thank Czech you. Republic, yeah. But uh, yeah, so thank you for your show and tell, and I I think that kind of ends it with our viewers for We didn't get a whole lot this time. I know that we had like a viewer show and tell like on the days that we kind of head off before like the whole vacation thing. Um, so next time we'll have to get some more show and tells. I thought we had more. But... Yeah, I think we did. And so if we <laughs> missed you, then um, go ahead and send us a follow up email or if you had uh, uh, tried to, you know, get us someplace else, definitely give us a heads up and we'll do another one soon and we'll add you to it. And there you go. Blame Kyle. <laughs> oh, <nah. laughs> don't blame me i was the one to like send it to them <laughs> no I, I don't want to blame you at all because you were actually a day early like getting everything prepped was, and everything ready that was awesome i thought it was uh, i thought it was thursday that day <laughs> so yeah backstory for those uh for those watching like you know, we're all doing our business and like her it's like hey how many show and tells we have i'm like oh you know i haven't checked i've been meaning to check the email like after work and so like kurt's getting everything ready for the podcast and he's sending all the pictures of who sent what and I'm like, because then I think he, I think you said you, that you're going to be late. I'm like, yeah, you do like realize ten minutes late. Yeah, I'm like, do you do realize that it's Wednesday, right? Tomorrow's <laughs> podcast day. <laughs> His mind and although like, that had oh. me checking my phone, like I'm like, oh no, is today? Oh my gosh. And then I'm like, well, if you guys really want to, we can just always record right now and get out of the way. I would have had to get out of my PJs and get dressed. <laughs> it's okay. Amy and I are we're, we're watching Yellowstone anyway, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> speaking of which before we get to our show and tells so like i know like the yellowstone's like a big like a big thing right now with a lot of people like people people are watching it amy and i started watching it and like i i couldn't have cared less like i was busy doing my own stuff and she put it on just kind of to try it and within 20 minutes she's like like i can tell she's like bored and like this is like she was like this is like like what's the hype like and now we're in season two because we've been binge watching it. Just kind of give it a try, and it's an, it's an okay show. But the biggest thing I'm stuck on right now was like the kid, like oh, the main protagonist, I guess, of the story. Like he blew up a stump, found like dinosaur bones. It's TV. It's not real dinosaur bones, but still, he found dinosaur bones. And this kid was like so obsessed with these bones, and like in the show like treasure hunters came and stole all the bones and like ransacked their entire place and like took everything. And the only thing I think about is like, you know, we were already in season two, like who stole these bones? Like that's all I care about is like, are they going to get them back? Are they going to find out who did it? <laughs> that's hilarious that this is the detail you're high centered on. <laughs> I'm like, it's so I'm so high centered on it. Like I'm like teetering. Like that's the only thing I want to know is like, is there resolution on this kid getting his dinosaur bones back? <laughs> Somebody spoil it in the comments. Let Kyle know at the very least if if there's any callback on on this uh you know uh, story arc. If not, you guys can stop watching, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know how many seasons there are. Like we've been binge watching it just to because we watched. The same I haven't things. watched it at all. I don't Neither know. have I. We we watched another show which I want to ask y'all about after podcast is over if y'all seen it <laughs> all right put okay that put that in your post notes <laughs> <laughs> okay tangent over okay karen show and tell what do you got okay um well surprise surprise it's gonna be some uh faceted stones no way um what? So, <laughs> i know come on um, so the last, uh, you tuned in, uh, for the Dan Hurd special, I had a broken stone. That was the only thing I had to show for my whole, uh, blood, sweat and tears, uh, for learning faceting it was this one little, um, broken Portuguese modified, uh, cut that Theo had sent me, which was exciting, but it was kind of sad at the same time. Since then I have been literally on the fastening machine every day and, um, learning all the problems that you can have and try to, trying to troubleshoot issues with the, the machine itself, which there's an incredible community out there. All of y'all that are out there watching that are part of it. Thank you so much. It's, it's, you know, this rock counting community is incredible. The mineral community, all the subsets, and it just gets better and better. So lots of love. Um, and then, 
um i i started to get the hang of it the first one is this bright square uh, i have some cuts that come before it but i'm not gonna bore y'all with everything um it, it, i'll bore you in the video that's gonna come out instead <laughs> never the, the, yeah <laughs> the full length video the you know the the beginning the the uh fails and the fantastic things that happened for faceting. Um, so this is a bright square. Uh, it's got Schiller in it. And instead of the Schiller, it's a sunstone. All of the ones that I've been cutting so far are sunstones, except for one quartz. Um, and I, I ditched it because I don't have the necessary polishing discs yet to be able to handle it. So there's so many expensive little nicks and knacks that you have to get. Uh, little wheels for this and that and the other thing. At any rate... So um, this sunstone, instead of having the pink Schiller, it's still copper. The Schiller inside had a valence or it changed color to more of a blue green. And it just tinted the stone instead of it being terribly visible. So you just have pool water, you know, and it's like at some angles, you don't really see it. It looks like a white stone. And then other angles, you're like, wow, that's like really deep water. And so I, I, I'm in love with the, uh, the bright square and, um, that was about a 10 carat stone to start off with. And I got 1.5 carats out of it. And so that's really good for a beginner because you could just go through the stone and have nothing left except for like a brass top, you know, um, <laughs> but you, you make a mistake and you have to recut. Right. And there's so many levels of the facets we've heard with uh, Theo over the time that he's been doing the faceting that you can only imagine that, like, if you make one mistake, you have to go back and recut. Right. And so like everything that's like really kind of big, gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you get there. And hopefully you get there. Some of them don't get there. Uh, the next one is a, a big Schillerific stone. So uh, after a couple of like stones that didn't work out so much, um, I don't know what compelled me to actually use a good stone, but I pl plucked out this uh, Schiller stone and um, and made a, a bigger uh stone out of this it's got shiller bands going through the middle of it uh you have to orient the the shiller on the table which is the top part that you peer into the stone um if the shiller is going this way then it'll block any of the light coming through the entire stone so uh if you line it up this way you don't get as much color except for it, that it gets like played around all of the ref the reflections of the stone when the light's hitting it and so um, you just have to decide how you want to color the stone, like depending on what angle. And so this one goes straight up and down. So you get the, the color of this, uh, Schiller through the reflection instead. And you can see just lines of it, uh, through the top. This one totally floated my boat. I was so excited when I finished this, although all of the meats aren't perfect. And so I know that it's not a perfect, perfect stone, but it, it looks good. Um, and so I decided I'd, I'd like, you know, not throw that out the window and actually continue uh, doing this. And so I changed from um, that was a uh, an unstacked mains uh, cut, which is a uh, brilliant round variation. And so um, I liked it. So you know how you have that thing in your mind where you have quintessential like that's what a cut stone wants to look like, you know? And I, I finally got there. They look like beginner stone, beginner stone. Oh, that looks like what I think it should look like. And so I stuck with it, uh, did another one. This one has blue with Schiller again, but um, I oriented at the diagonal to see what would happen. And it turned out uh, making the stone a little milky. And so it gave it some body, So, but it's not totally clear. And so um, that it kind of, it's interesting to play like, okay, here's the same cut and look at how different the stone looks because it's got uh, a different inclusion running through, which is kind of the fun of the, the sunstones is they're not just diamond clear. They have all these little bits and pieces inside. And I don't know, that makes me excited because they don't look at the same when they're done. Um, and so uh, that this one exactly is getting set like just to the side of me here tonight. And so nice. after the, yeah, I, I'm making the prong <laughs> setting and the jewelry is, it's already ready. All I have to do is set the stones now. And so um, I don't know, in the next like 48 hours, there, there should be a short of that coming out. I'm so cool. pumped though. I, I like, I am not sitting still here. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to go play right there and so um <laughs> <laughs> that one uh 
started off um, at about eight carats and came down to one. And I think I mentioned the, the one before, the big one is a two carat stone. And that started off like a 14 carat. Uh, rough or something like that. So you're, you're getting about like what the ratio of my take is on. I, I have to cut a lot before I get to something. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that has to do with the sunstones too, because they've got like all these fractures. And like I said, you know, Schiller inclusions and all these things that you, you know, uh, basically you're walking through a minefield trying to find like a clear spot in the stone so that you can get down to something. Um, and then uh, the last is uh, the unstacked mains again. So I'm high centered on this particular cut because I like it. Um, and I just wanted to get one lined up with good meats before I went on to another design. And this last one did that. Like, I think that there might be a couple of meats that aren't perfect. And that's when the angles, you know, all of the corners match and all that kind of stuff. I think I fudged it a little bit towards the the girdle, but otherwise it's pretty darn close. And so I would say it's my most successful stone. And I it's got Schiller running through the middle of it too. And so that one, like I might have to forever keep that one. Like nice. I'm just so excited. Like it's finally like something that I want to <laughs> set. But the one before it actually uh got uh sidled into being the first one set because I was so excited to finish a good stone that I was like, okay, you know, like the, the, the gravy is like going out to the sunstone fields, getting it, doing the, the, the work on it, faceting, and then setting it like the finalization. So like, uh, Kurt framing a piece of artwork, you know, it's like the, the start to finish thing is very exciting, but I usually, you know, it's that last part of framing it where you're like, oh my gosh. This is oh, awesome. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can tell I'm not at all excited. Um, that one is <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what obsession does, guys. This is like total mania. Um, 1.5 carats uh, out of about a 10 carat stone again. And, you know, if you're getting 10 to, to 15 carat stones uh, out of the sunstone fields, you're doing good. I mean, that's like, that's a big sunstone. Uh, you see some of these honkers out there that are more, they're, they're rare. And so you get what you get. And um, and so uh, that is pretty much the the culmination of of what my, my winter break was. Um, Steve didn't see a whole lot of me, neither did the dogs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so the 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 drama and the the fun will be on both a full length video that should be coming out soon. It's all in the the editing right now. It's just that somebody has to yank her off of the machine and put her on the computer so that it gets done. So set a schedule. <laughs> yeah, I don't adhere to them. I have a whiteboard. <laughs> like I I keep on looking up at it and it's like, oh gosh, you know, I wish I could scratch that part off, but I can't. And like, you know, how like the the ink starts obviously being old. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you've written stuff all around. And stuff. You're like, okay, that's bad. So, but thank you. I think that um, yeah, I need to hire like somebody to keep me on schedule <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm yeah i'm on the same 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 boat i can't afford to pay with money though like i pay with rocks and high fives but <laughs> <laughs> like, you work for me i pay you rocks yeah you know i get i i like go from over there over to the computer so that i can start you know editing my videos some more and little dude like oh somebody's on the discord oh you know <laughs> like, like <laughs> just go and play for a while oh my gosh my my two hour window for for working on that is gone i'm gonna go back to the press <laughs> Well, thank you for showing your show and tells. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and uh, Spember takes a just it. You'll was it, you'll crack a few eggs before you. I don't. I don't know. I can't remember that phrase. Good omelet. Uh, yeah. You got to crack a few eggs, and you know I'm not. I'm not worried about it. Like maybe if you had talked to me a couple of weeks ago, I might have been like ah. But <laughs> maybe it was better that we didn't have a podcast a couple of weeks ago because y'all <laughs> might have had a different Karen. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. The, lots of learning, lots and lots of learning. Well, the, the videos that you sent us earlier of the facets are very, you're doing a very good job and they're Thank very you. beautiful. I'm that's... really liking how they're, how they're turning out. Thank you so much, Kurt. I, it's, it's, that's why it's so hard to stop. You know, like yeah. as soon as I'm totally done with one, I'm like, Ooh, who's next? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and then uh, Nira uh, sent me some, I mean, actually in all the packages, I got uh, some cool things to play with, but specifically uh, Nira knew that I was uh, cutting my teeth on the faceting and she's, she facets too. And so she sent me some rough of stuff that, oh, wow. nice. But I figure, you know, I need to behave myself and and cut on rocks that I can get more of before I start using precious rocks that people send me. So just go get some cheap amethyst and quartz and just keep practicing on those. The quartz and I don't like each other right now. <laughs> I, I need better equipment. To, to, to be honest, people will tell you like, um, you know, well, rose quartz. Kyle, <laughs> now, let me say a few words that'll bring a rash up for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you just need different um, uh, polishing laps or uh, pre-polished laps for some of the different stones. And um, I got a good setup for sunstones right now. And I'm going to add to my quiver as um, I go from being broke to having some money. <laughs> it's right now. It's like everything. What is gone. money? Oh, right. <laughs> But yeah, the sunstones are, are an absolute blast and they, they give back, you know, when you're done, you're just like, oh man, you're so you know where to get them. And I know, uh, yeah, I, I pretty much have a, an unending supply as soon as we can, aff- or as long as we can, you know, afford gas to get down there. <laughs> so that's my story. Who's next? How well, about you, Kurt? Oh, uh, sure. I can go. Uh, so my strong I just have two pieces that I was working on. They're they're crisp late Christmas gifts that like I'll be sending them out probably later this month. <laughs> um, but the first one is I've showed this material on the podcast before. It's Rosetta. It's green Rosetta opalite um, from Australia. Um, the mines are like mined out in like the sixties. Um, I don't know if you. I'll send Kyle a video, but Ooh. it's green. It's very beautiful. Um, and I was trying to do a facet job on a uh, freehand facet on the flat lap. Um, there's some inclusions inclusions in here. Uh, so the green Rosetta Opalite, it's just like uh, translucent opal. There's no um, c- uh, c- color play in there, but there's inclusions in here that make it look like this color, there's color play. So it, it's, it's kind of cool. And I've been enjoying working with it. I'm, I still have a couple stages to go through. Um, but it has a really nice band of like blacks and white, whites running th- straight through the stone. Kind of looks like it could be a little bit of like calcine, the way it there's like um, tiny but turtles uh, running through there. Um, and it's a very beautiful stone, and I can't wait to finish it. Um, but I'll get Kyle a video so he can throw it up. Those... And, uh, so you guys can see. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, that's pretty cool. It's, it's, they take a beautiful polish too. Yeah, like, yeah, gorgeous. yeah. It feels holding it after like how it is right now. It feels like I'm holding a piece of plastic. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it, uh, it's not dense and cold like agate. No. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a uh, different and interesting, and plan to work on some more with it. Oh, hold on, dropped it. Uh, this other piece is so like whenever I first started uh, rock hounding, or first started uh, rock hounding the channel, uh, one of my first videos was out at Nancy Hanks Gulch, and we, me and my uh, father in law, we went out hiking. We, and because we were uh, out in that area, there's no service, so we weren't sure if we were at the right location or whatnot. And we were walking up up this trail, and uh, he find he finds his little like. Uh, probably softball size uh, chunk of uh, had some green crystals in it. And we're like, oh yeah, we're in the right, we're on the right trail. So uh, that piece I end up taking, cutting it open, and it was really beautiful. I'll have a short uh, video coming out on that uh, in the near future. But I, um, I took a small slab of that and uh, polished it up, and it's a small uh, freeform uh, cabochon of nice. green fluorite. And there's there's some like red staining in here, which is uh, hematite staining. And then there's a little bit of purple uh, and white going through the stone, which is quartz and amethyst. Uh, oh, so. Cool. Nice. Wow. Are you that's kidding a, me? That's a cool stone. Like a quadrifecta? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. See if I can show it to you guys right now, but maybe drowning it out. But yeah. Oh, that's too that's cool. 
Yeah, nice. So uh, I'll send videos. Uh, going to wrap that? Huh? Going to wrap it? I think so. Possibly. Buckle, buckle, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to like, uh, I, I, I want to wrap everything that I polish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Even like really big pieces. <laughs> but I'm thinking, uh, I've been trying to like, maybe like, like just polish it and just see if I can sell some cabochons as cabochons. And then, and then if they don't sell, I'll wrap them and try reselling them again. So it'll, it'll get wrapped either way. Fair enough. <laughs> So thank those are my show and tells. Beautiful. Well, thank I you. I vote on wrapping that one though. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> try it. It'll probably look cool with that red stain red hematite standing on it mixed with the copper. Oh yeah. It looks pretty cool. Well, just gave me it kind of gave me an idea for a project I should do later date. But do it. It's, <laughs> it's not really wrapping wrapping related, but like I don't know. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, ideas are coming up, but yeah. they're not like communicating wise. Yeah. <laughs> ideas happen all the time. It's like I'll write down an idea. I'm like, oh, I should do this. And then I just don't do it because I have other stuff going on. I'm like, I get distracted pretty easily. And yeah, that's a lot. And it, 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 it's, it's a bad thing. Like, it's good and bad. It's good I have like all these cool ideas, but it's bad. I have a hard time focusing like on one thing at any given time. Like, need to focus <laughs> you'll be working over here and they're like oh that's pretty over there and go over here and like oh 20 you, minutes you pass. should see how i clean the house <laughs> like i'm just like I'll, I'll start off in the kitchen and then i'll go get like a rag out of the like out of the claws or something and i see something in the bathroom so i clean that in the bathroom and they go put something away and i see something else and so it's like a weird like beeline <laughs> like all over the house i'm surprised they have i haven't left a sink on for any given amount of time it's just, just, I, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's how I clean. Totally understand, man. Same yeah. thing in the shop. Like that's why I like to have a clean shop because, like, if I see something out of place and I'm working on something, guess what? All all of <laughs> a sudden ends up on the low priority, and that is what I'm working on currently. It's like, okay, I have to do that now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't, didn't really have like show and tell. Um, I mean, I, I guess. I can show you the the lens that Amy got me for Christmas. Yeah, let's see that. How far can I go? <laughs> oh, I actually have to stand up. Thank you. Don't mind my jammies. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna see pajamas either last night or tonight. <laughs> it was gonna happen. <laughs> oh my god, that's actually heavy. Oh no, that's not heavy. Just wedged. Don't drop it. Oh, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I just need to see if I can get the the camera for it now. Is like she got me this. It came in late, and she told me like um I can just like open it later because it wasn't in yet. But Ooh. got a fancy little ooh nice Pretty. nice lens. And so my my goal is to buy one of like um, Canon camera because um, Amy watches uh, Garden Answer, and at one point she had like a list of like cameras that she uses, and Canon was like on the list. I'm like, okay, I'll add that to the list, and I think this lens is also on the list, so I added them both, and because. And it's probably going to be part of my words of wisdom a little bit later, but my plan as I keep doing YouTube stuff and just social media stuff in general is to always improve what I'm doing. Because again, it falls back on, um, I'll go back a little bit. So someone left a comment on my very first video recently. <laughs> and I, I deleted the comment because it was, it was it was rather negative. I'm like, eh, whatever. Um, but like even going back to my very first video, like it was just like the the footage was really bad. And like I'm like, you know, things have gotten way better since I started like the channel like two years ago. And and now I'm looking myself at myself now. Like, yeah, I still use my can my my phone for like all the recording, but you know, I invested in better. Um, uh, camera for, for for the computer for like the uh, podcasts 
I got like these special like let's do this here. Forgot. <laughs> I can't do this. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I got the like those box lights for like for like, yeah like shooting videos so it helps diffuse the light better. It's just constantly improving and investing, which means I'm constantly broke. <laughs> yeah. Heard that. <laughs> but uh you know this, this based on my show and tell, and I can just kind of like kind of slide into words of wisdom is this don't be afraid to invest in what you love to do because eventually those investments will pay off. And on the same line of that, like don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone to try new things to see how well they do. Because if you do the same thing over and over again, yeah, you'll be comfortable with it, but like you gotta kind of see what your audience wants too. And if they're wanting, you know, better, better content, like look at your numbers and like look at the, for those that are getting into like making content, it doesn't have to be necessarily for like rock counting or like, like lapidary stuff. It could be for anything. Look at your uh, analytics and see where people are clicking off. Like, why do they click off? And you have to, you have to be okay with constantly improving yourself and the equipment that you use in order to see like better results granted there, there's some people out there that can just like have a camera and like be naturally oh gosh there's there's youtubers where i don't know why they have millions like i think there's like vloggers i'm like mm-hmm. i wish i could get away with just like talking in front of a camera and just like and just like be popular <laughs> not really no, example <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it's you know yeah don't be afraid to invest step out of your comfort zone and yeah be, be okay with learning so let's do that so <laughs> i'm gonna stop my word vomit there and someone else can take it <laughs> <laughs> um you know it's interesting that you chose that because you know for obvious reasons with the endeavor that i've been doing i pretty much have the same uh kind of words of wisdom and i guess m- my take on it is basically no matter how long you've been doing something like lapidary or uh, how long you've been speaking certain languages or what have you, give yourself a chance to learn a new one. And what ends up happening, I literally felt like my brain was electrified and it probably was there's more activity going on if i was you know uh if there were those diodes that were picking up the electrical impulses a lot more would be lit up and as you do get older you lose the ability to learn as fast um your brain plasticity and all that kind of stuff might decline so sharpen that blade of of your brain and take on something new if for no other reason just to keep your your brain active just like your you know you'd work out to keep muscles or or whatever you know use it or lose it and so that's that's i think the the most exciting thing about the new endeavor with the faceting i've only been doing it for the month of december you know, and um, it's it's such a super duper fun thing to learn something new and get good. And that might take a long, long time. I'm not going to be good at faceting for probably years, but it's, you know, the the gratification of of doing something and then getting some feedback, like Kyle was saying. And, you know, some of the feedback's not great. And others might be a fantastic pat on the back, but it's good to do for your brain. So feed it. How about you, Kurt? Oh, those are really good words. I don't have anything to go into what both of y'all were saying. I have something just a little bit different. Um, so you know how when you go, when you uh, plan a trip, for like, a, like a day's hike, and there are there's lots of different things you can take with you in case for some reason you were to fall or get hurt out there and a search crew comes and looks for you or family or someone's looking for you. Another, like, there's there's devices you can hold that there's kind of like a beacon to help find your location another good uh really simple cheap tool uh tessie told me this like a, a week or two ago and uh it's been on my mind that it's, it, i'm i'm definitely going to do it 
Um, but buy a uh, roll of foil, keep it in your car. So that way, whenever you're going out on a day's hike, you can just tear a little sheet off, put it on the ground and step on it. So that way it leaves your imprint of your shoe. So that way, and then uh, put take that sheet and put it in your, windsh your windshield of your, of your vehicle. So if someone something happens to you where, while you're out on the trail, um, and uh, people that find your vehicle, they know what what your shoe print looks like. So that way they can have a better chance of finding your location. That's so, a great hack. That's a neat yeah, trick. Yeah, I thought so too. And we're in these shoes in today's day. I mean, because otherwise they'd have to find one of them to know what yeah. prints they're needing to look yeah. for. You know, they'd have to borrow it from the bear or whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like Excuse that. me, Yogi. Can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> give me the shoe. I'll give you the picnic basket. <laughs> there you go. Right well, on. thank you both for your words of wisdom. Um, Karen, would you do us the honors of signing us off for the beginning of this year? Woo! Yeah. First uh, podcast of the year. <laughs> ah, happy New Year, everybody. Um. Yeah, we wish you the best in your rock hounding endeavors, mineral, uh, lapidary, all the, the good stuff that, that we do. And um, share with us your shows and tells for the next one. Uh, catch up to us on the Discord. We're having a super good time over there. And it was really nice to be able to check in with everybody while we were having the holiday and not being able to hang out with the podcast. So uh, for both of those, go to our email address. It's down in the description. And you can either ask for an invite for the Discord or you can leave us pictures there uh, or both. So do that and um, leave us a comment about what you did during the, the holidays. We'd love to hear from you or like super cool gifts. Did you get some rocks? Did you get some new equipment? We want to hear about it. And otherwise, on behalf of all of us, the podcast crew here, and of course, Theo, who's not here, we wish you a very happy new year, the best in 23, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Rock on. Bye. Peace. And meow.